QuickBooks Online 2024 Keyboard Shortcuts. Get ready because we're moving on up with QuickBooks Online. Here we are online in our browsers searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive. Looking for the result that has Intuit.com and the URL. Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. Selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. Reports on the left hand side. And then we're going to be in our favorites, right clicking on the balance sheet, open link in a new tab, right click on the profit and loss, open link in a new tab. Here's the links up top, middle tab, closing the hamburger, there's our balance sheet. Tab to the right, closing the hamburger, there's our income statement or profit and loss. Back to the first tab, that's the setup process that we do every time. Data input on the first tab, then looking at the results. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com to the tabs to the right for the financial statements and related reports. We're now going to be taking a look at shortcuts. We've listed out some of these keyboard shortcuts over here in OneNote. Possibly we'll provide you a link to this or a PDF file, but you can also generally find this information by searching in your favorite browser for QuickBooks Online keyboard shortcuts. Now the general rule would be that if we can do more on the keyboard, less on the mouse, the faster we will be. Although which keyboard shortcuts will be most important to you will be dependent in part on what kind of accounting you're doing uh, within QuickBooks. What are the forms that you're using most often? And those are the shortcuts that might be most important to you. Also, some of these shortcuts might be related to basically general uh, windows in general. So let's just go through some of these and I'll give some commentary and we'll test out a few of them. So how to open a second window. So for Internet Explorer, you could say con press Control plus N, Firefox and and Chrome. So if we go over here and if I'm, if I'm in Internet Explorer and I say, uh, hold on, I clicked on the name and I say uh, Control plus N, it's going to open up a new window. Now note it, op it opened up outside of where I was before. So I could grab this tab up top and then just snap it over here. And there, and so now it's opened up the window and I can drag it basically into uh, place. And so let's take a look at the next ones how to search for text in a window. So you can say Control plus F works in Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Chrome and Internet Explorer. So we can say Control F if we want to uh, search for text within a window. So if I'm within here, let's see if I could just go within here and we'll say Control F. And then we have our search field up top. If I, if I search for customer, so now it's it's searching within the window for that particular word. So that can be a useful uh, tool, a useful shortcut. How to enter dates. So we have our fields. We have next day. This is one I use all the time and the previous day. And then you could use these if you want to get to today, the T, although today is usually the default. You can go to the first day of the week, W, last day of the week, K, first day of the month, M, last day of the month, H, first day of the year, Y, last day of the year, R, press Alt plus down arrow to open the pop-up calendar icon. So let's check that out. Let's open up an invoice and we can say that if I'm in the date field and I want to go up or down, I use this all the time. You hit the plus button to go up. 
you hit the minus button to go down. That's very uh, useful. And then you can say T, if I select T, it goes to the current day. If I select W, it goes to the first day of the week. If I select K, it goes to uh, the last day of the week. If I select M, then it's gonna go to the first day of the month. H, it's gonna go to the last day of the month. And then Y, first day of the year. And then R, the last day of the year. So you might not use all of those, but the current day might be useful first day of the month, depending on what you're doing. So you could say control uh, con uh, alt and the down arrow will give you the drop down. That to me is not fully useful because you're probably then going to use your mouse anyways. So I would think clicking the little <laughs> button right here is, is going to be about the same amount of time, I would think generally. But you have that one. So how to calculate amounts and rates. So in any amount or rate field, enter a calculator. When you use a tab, QuickBooks Online calculates the result. So we can add, we can subtract, we can multiply and divide within a field. This is something I don't take advantage of as often as I, as I should. But, but if, if I wanted to calculate something within a field, let's actually open like a bill this time. Let's open like a expense form and say I wanted to calculate the amount here. So I could say plus, uh, or let's say that I was gonna say 100 plus uh, 700 or something like that. It'll, it'll then calculate it to 800. Obviously most Windows uh, computers also have a calculator. I've noticed if you pull out the calculator here, it's a little annoying because the calculator sometimes gets behind the screen like this. If you want it to stay before the screen, then in this windows, you can you could select this and now it's kind of stuck there. So even if I pull the screen over, I have my calculator here, which is nice, but you still might want to do some calculations within here. So if you just type in as if this is the calculator, we can do a subtraction. I could say 100 minus 60 tab and then it will record it. We can do multiplication five times seven tab 35 and we can do uh, division 70 divided by five is 14. So you can do some quick math within the data input fields. Not all data input fields have the capacity to do the math. So you kind of have to test it out and see which fields have it and which fields do not. But that's a pretty little bit faster than pulling out the trusty calculator or like getting into Excel or something. Uh, how to move around fields on most forms. Tab uh, to go forward, shift tab to go back, use the space bar uh, to, check, uh, to check a check box field. So if I go through here, this is very useful, right? If I want to go through this, tab, 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 tab. We do that all the time. That will be a lot faster than clicking between field to field. It's also more likely less likely that you will skip fields that might need some data input within it. You can say uh, control tab, uh, was it control tab uh, to go back, shift tab, I'm sorry, shift tab to go backwards. I don't use that one quite as often. If I'm going backwards, I usually go to the mouse, but maybe that one would be faster because usually I'm going forwards and not backwards. I don't fill the form up backwards. And if you want to put something in here, if I'm, I tabbed onto this field and I want to check it, you can hit the space bar. I haven't used that often, but that's actually pretty useful <laughs> if, you, if you're if you checking things off so that you're tabbing through it and then you don't have to go to the mouse to check that off when you get to that particular field. So I might incorporate that myself. How to choose items in a drop-down list. You can press the tab until you reach the field and then press Alt plus the down arrow to open the list. Press uh, the up arrow or down arrow to move through the items in the list press tab to select the item you want to move to the next field. So if you don't want to open the whole list, but you want to scroll through the items in the text box, press control plus the down arrow. So in other words, if I tab to a field, I tab to a field here, tab, 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 I'm in the category. Instead of selecting the drop down here, I could select, uh, I, can, I can select alt down arrow, and then it gives me my items. And then I can scroll down this way. I'm just using my arrows. And once I find what I want, I can select tab 
which will select the item. So you can see we can do basically everything there with just the, the keyboard without the mouse, without having to do this and scroll down. Most people use the mouse for that still. I think mouse is pretty efficient because the scroll bar makes it pretty efficient. But if you do it, if you're tabbing through it and you, and you do everything with just the keyboard, that might be a little faster and it's possibly more impressive. So if you're doing data input in front of people, it might be a way to do it. So how to choose items in a list that has sub items. So type the first few characters of the parent item until it is selected to jump to the list of sub items. Type the first few characters of the sub item until it is selected. Press the alt plus the down arrow to open the list of sub items and then press the down arrow or up arrow to scroll through. Press tab to select. So if we're, if we're scrolling down how to choose the items we can, we're, if we're in an item here, we can select alt and down again. Hold on, let me tab into that item. We're tabbing here and then alt and down. And then some of these might have sub items. There's not too many sub accounts. And so, and then we might go alt down again to go into the sub accounts. And then when we select something, we can select tab. So I believe that's similar to what we saw before how to save forms so from any form press alt s instead of clicking save so if you just want to save the form that's these keys down here so instead of saying save and close save and new and then we have the save button if we just want to save it alt s so we can hit the alt s to save it uh, so how to select a transaction type in an account register so in a new yellow transaction row press shift plus tab to select the transaction type field press alt plus down arrow to open the list press the up arrow or down arrow to move uh, through the list or type the first letter of the transaction uh, transaction type that you want if there are two transaction types that begin with the same letter type the letter twice to select the second one and then press tab and then I won't go through that one how to save or edit a selected transaction you could press alt plus save to save alt plus shift save and for Firefox and Chrome you could press alt plus the E to edit a saved transaction so if we want to, if we want to go back into a transaction alt plus E to edit it now you can also enter open some forms uh, if you wanted to open the forms with the keystrokes so these are things that can be opened by saying control alt and then the letter so we can open directly an invoice a check so an invoice control alt i a check controlled alt w estimate control alt uh, e an expense control alt x a receive payment control alt r customers control alt c control alt v for vendors chart of accounts a uh, list help uh, search and then this exit transaction uh you have the control alt x and cancel out save and new and save and close so let's just check a few of those out so again most of these are pretty easily found in the drop down with an invoice but if you're doing like invoices all the time and you're somewhere in some other screen it might be a little faster to say the control alt i for an invoice so there's an invoice we can say control alt w and that's going to give us then the check form not the expense but check form control alt x is the expense form so if i say control alt x we've got the expense form boom and then the receive payment form control alt r for the receive payment form and then we've got uh, the customers if i go control alt c that takes me into my customers that might be a kind of a useful shortcut because that one's a little bit more buried we go down here to the sales and then to the customers right so you, and if you work in the vendors all the time control alt v will take you to your vendors and your expenses and then in your vendors that might be a useful shortcut if you go in there a lot control alt a takes you to your chart of accounts that could be a useful uh shortcut because the chart of accounts is a little buried uh in there you could find it in a couple different places but uh that might be useful if you're going to the chart of accounts all the times. control alt i will take you to your lists 
So, uh, I'm sorry, Control, Control Alt L will take you to your lists. So that, that was pretty easy to find up top in your lists up top, but again, might be a little bit faster. So those are some of the major uh, keyboard shortcuts that you can test out and see which of them are most useful for you. Again, it takes a little bit of time, of course, to learn uh, the keyboard shortcuts. So it might be dependent upon what area of accounting or bookkeeping that you're working in most often as to whether or not or which shortcuts will be most applicable. Although some shortcuts uh, that keyboard functions, I think, are going to be useful for everyone, such as, of course, the tab feature, tabbing through reports. And uh, that, that I think, in, in the plus and, both plus and minus things to increase or decrease uh, the date in some fields and possibly the calculator, those are things I think everybody uh, would, would want to utilize. Some of the other shortcuts, you have to decide whether or not it's worth your time to memorize the added, uh, the added shortcuts, which, of course, does take some repetition to then make it part of your routine.